Hello. We are here to talk about the Cochrane Review um, concerning deworming of soil transmitted intestinal worms in children. And so thanks for joining us. My name uh, is Paul Garner. I work at the uh, Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine and I'm with uh, the lead author of the review. Hi there, nice to be here. I'm David Taylor Robinson. I'm from the Department of Public Health and Policy at the University of Liverpool. So I'd, I'd just like to start by giving some background to Cochrane. Uh, David is then going to present the review. I'm going to make some comments at the end. So uh, um, we set up the Cochrane Infectious Diseases Group about 20 years ago to carry out systematic reviews and meta-analysis independently um, related to tropical infections. We helped introduce uh, systematic views to, to this field um, and we had a number of fairly early uh, successes in this area. The impregnated review of mosquito nets clearly showed mortality was reduced in children in malaria areas. A review of oral rehydration salt solution showed uh, solutions with less salt in were more effective. Um, and um, all of these reviews led to changes in policy and, and helped move things forward. A, a big review of artemisinin-based combination treatments helped underpin global policy pushes in this area. So we, we, we have a long experience of working in, in systematic reviews in this area. In the mid-1990s we carried out a systematic review of deworming. Uh, Cochrane reviews have a rigorous set of methods um, established by a global team specialist in this area and we applied our standard methods to the, de, uh, to the topic of deworming and actually found that there wasn't really a lot of evidence um, uh, around the effects of these interventions and it didn't really um, have much policy impact at the time. Um, over the years two things have happened and I, you may not know this but Cochrane reviews are updated as new evidence emerges and so over the years we have been updating this review uh, methods have also got stronger for, uh, particularly with dealing with evidence of no effect we've not got much better at doing that and more and more trials have been published in this area so the recent review uh, was published uh, this year the update of it was published this year and I'm going to hand over David to David to present the key results from this review Great, thank you. So we're going to move over to some of the slides now. So here you can see the title of the review. So we're interested in soil transmitted intestinal worms in children. We're interested in looking at the effect on nutritional indicators, haemoglobin and school performance. This is the team uh, involved in the review. So there were more than us than just Paul and I, it was Carla. Uh, and Nicola and Sarah there. And in terms of the question, so we're interested in these key effects on nutritional indicators, haemoglobin and school performance. We're interested in deworming drugs for soil transmitted intestinal worms in children. Systematic reviews have inclusion criteria, which, which we outline in our, in our protocol, so it's, it's driven by a predefined protocol. We're interested in control trials, uh, randomised control trials, quasi-randomised control trials, including stepped wedge designs, and the population of interest is children aged 16 years or less in community settings. There were lots of outcomes that we could potentially include in this review and our selection of key outcomes was informed by our understanding of a logic model that, that thinks through what the effects of deworming programmes are likely to be. So we were interested in these immediate effects, these potential immediate effects of deworming. What are the impacts on children's growth? What are the impacts on haemoglobin? and what are the impacts on cognition. And then flowing from those impacts, we could assess whether children's well-being uh, was improved, whether their intellect 
uh, was any better and whether deworming improved their attendance at school. And then stemming from those, uh, from those effects, we move on to the longer term impacts. So we may see a reduction in mortality in children in populations. We may see an improvement in school performance. And we may see an Im improvement in productivity in the whole of the pop in, in populations that are that are dewormed. So the whole analysis was informed by this this logic model and pathway. Then when we come to put together the uh, we we search through for the for the randomised control trials that are relevant to our inclusion criteria. Uh, we assess the quality of the evidence. So uh, there's a big emphasis on looking at risk of bias in these studies and then people independently extracting the data for inclusion in the review. So pe three people were involved in independently looking at the data and then we put this all together uh, in the final report under a number of sections. So in terms of the key policy, we're interested <coughs> in the impacts of deworming in populations where all children in endemic areas are treated, so uh, that's, the, that's the key focus in terms of policy. We also stratify, uh, we also look at the analysis in terms of children who are known to be infected with, with worms and present those results separately. And then all of the analyses are stratified by prevalence and intensity of infection using the WHO criteria because one might imagine that you'll see bigger effects of deworming interventions in areas where these worms are, are more common. So if we move on to the results, when we, when we searched through the literature and extracted all of the trials that meet the inclusion criteria, overall there are 45 trials in, in the latest update of the review. 44 of those uh, included around 68,000 children and then there was one additional trial uh, which included over a million children that focused on mortality and these studies have been undertaken in a in a range of countries so 23 countries are represented in terms of the randomized control trials included in the analysis and now we're going to go through the the results so this is a key slide and it looks at the impact of deworming delivered to all children over, over a period of time and children are given multiple doses of deworming and this looks at the impact on weight, so an important measure of nutritional status after multiple doses, it looks at the longest follow-up point uh, reported in the individual trials. Each of these blobs represents an individual randomized control trial and you can see that the analysis is stratified on the basis of high, medium and low prevalence settings. And then this line here shows the line of, of no effect essentially and if the blob is on this side it means the trial, the effect estimate favours deworming and if it's on this side then it suggests it shows no effect. Uh, and this is the pooled estimate when we statistically combine all of the results from these trials. And what we conclude from this analysis, which is based upon all of these trials and also the quality appraisal of all of those trials, is that when it comes to weight gain, uh, deworming may have little or no effect on average weight gain. The overall effect estimate spans zero the confidence intervals are, are pretty tight, suggesting reasonable evidence of no effect on, on, on weight gain. Overall, we assess this, the quality of the evidence as being low quality, and that's all very that's all made explicit in the in the review through this grade table. So for every one of these plots, there's a corresponding uh, grade table that talks through the quality of the evidence and how we've arrived at this overall statement. So in terms of weight gain there may be little or no effect when children are treated with multiple doses over a long period of time. Let me go through 
The other important results uh, in terms of children who are treated with multiple drugs. So this looks at height, uh, and again you can see the overall effect estimate suggests no effect with fairly tight confidence intervals, and there are no different, that's the same whether it's a high prevalence setting or a low prevalence setting, and we conclude there's probably no effect on average height gain. In, term of, in terms of haemoglobin, another key uh, immediate outcome, uh, similar result, we, we see that there's uh, evidence of no effect, so deworming may have no effect on average haemoglobin. Now we come to some of the other outcomes that can't be combined in MSR analysis, so if you look at our review, you'll see that these are all they're all tabulated, and you can see all, the re all of these results uh, in, a, in a table. And what we see is that when it comes to looking at formal tests of children's cognition, uh, there were five trials, and all reported that no effect was, was demonstrated in over 30,000 kids. And for this outcome, there's moderate quality evidence. And in terms of exam performance, uh, Again, we find no effect on exam performance in two trials with moderate quality evidence. And in terms of school attendance, uh, we suggest there's n we don't know whether there's an effect on school, school attendance. You can see that the overall effect estimate in the meta-analysis suggests no effect. There's limited evidence uh, on school attendance and the findings are inconsistent and at high risk of bias. So we when we look, when we grade the quality of the evidence, we suggest that there's very low quality of evidence for this particular outcome. So that's, that takes us through the main outcomes that we're interested in, apart from mortality, in terms of these long-term follow-up trials. And when we look at mortality in the, this is from, mainly from the DEVTA trial, we see evidence of no effect on mortality. Uh, in three trials, but that's at low quality evidence. So we can go through the results from, uh, in terms of the other outcomes. We also, we also look at uh, studies that just look at infected children. So these are studies where all the children are known to be infected and they're treated with deworming drugs. And what we see after one dose is that there's some evidence of an impact on weight, uh, but that's low quality evidence in the analysis. Here's the, here's the meta-analysis. And actually this is driven by quite large effects on weight in these Stevenson studies, which were conducted 15 to 20 years ago in the same setting. So the, these studies were in a, in a, in a school where, the, where there's particularly high uh, multiple infection of children with, with many different soil transmitted helminths and we suggest that treating kids who are known to be infected may increase weight gain over the next one to six months. But in that category we don't know if there's an effect on haemoglobin and that's low quality evidence. So if we go back to our logic model if we're interested in impacts, if we're interested in the policy, which is to treat all children in endemic areas with multiple doses of deworming drugs, what do we see? Well, if we, if we look at those outcomes, what, what we see is the evidence on the desired impact, so long-term impacts on mortality and school performance, they're absent. The evidence for, for school attendance is limited, and there's no evidence of effects on physical well-being. But in terms of the main effects, there's, there's fairly good evidence of no effect on weight and good evidence of no effect on haemoglobin cognition and, and school performance. So in the review we conclude that treating children known to have worm infection may have some nutritional benefits for the individual. However, in mass treatment of all children in endemic areas, there's, no, there's now substantial evidence that this doesn't improve key outcomes, nutritional status, haemoglobin, cognition, school performance, 
or, or survival. So I guess they're the main conclusions from our review and perhaps we can go on to discuss some of the policy implications of, of what we've found here. Thanks David for that presentation. Uh, I'd just like to add that um, this is as all Cochrane reviews basically a independent critical appraisal of all of the studies looking and taking into account the quality of the evidence in uh, assessing uh, the size and the importance of the effect. Um, we ourselves um, are not uh, conflicted. We, we don't have uh, any, um, uh, um, anything to win or lose dependent on the outcome of this review. Uh, our jobs don't depend on this review showing a negative or a positive effect. Uh, I think we, uh, you, could, you see with the database three trials 20 years ago that had quite big effects in naive populations and subsequent studies really have shown little or no effect, really quite large uh, studies. The Kramer study, uh, Big Well and Kramer study, excellent study, it's included in the review, has some quite small effects on, on, on school attendance um, and these are you know dealt with uh, within the review. Um, uh, there are a number of other trials that we've been uh, criticised for excluding. Um, we, they just simply don't meet our inclusion criteria. There are observational studies, there are aspects to them which mean their results uh, are probably confounded, but they certainly don't meet our inclusion criteria. Um, and with our 20 years of working in this field, um, you don't see many reviews with such good evidence of, of no effect.